Talk. I am your host, King Rems. To my left, we have the wonderful LV Miss Doja Cat herself. We have the lovely Chica Gigi, Miss Elizabeth, aka Cherry Tart, and the wonderful Faith Fontaine. How you doing, girl? I'm good. All right, today we're going to be discussing did 2020 make you or did it break you? Girls, I'm going to throw this one to you straight away because 2020, <laughs> boy, the ghetto. Where do we begin? Wow. So can I start, please? Of course. 2020 was, for the past 10 years, going to be my year. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was like, 2020, this is, this is going to be the making of me. I'm going to become everything that I need to become. And I had a master plan. So a lot of people do New Year's resolutions, which are unrealistic. Uh, my New Year's res- resolutions is always to have 12 resolutions and that is i.e achieve something every month so it could be something as doing the garden or finishing degree it could be different levels but for me it's something that's made me progress um 2020 started off well um for the first eight weeks for the first eight weeks and I found personally the first lockdown completely broke me um and it wasn't because of lockdown because me I know I'm quite extrovert, but I'm very introvert at the same time. And I love being by myself. Being locked away and away from society was the best thing that could have happened to me on this earth. Mm. But then um, personal family matters took place. Mm -hmm. And because of lockdown, I wasn't able to have that support. I wasn't able to give support and it completely broke me. Even intimate relationships, something that I would normally deal with on a normal day and can handle. That's these two girls, because they, they had me for the beginning of 2020 crying almost every day of how, to the point of almost suicide, like I was in a really, really bad place. Then lockdown two came. And by lockdown two, I was actually a lot better. Um, I seek counselling. I had my two other side counsellors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... I had the support, even us, like, all of us in the group, when we're having bad days, we actually message each other in group or whatever, or just even just to get jokes or to make each other happy. And even not being able to see you guys, that felt made me feel a lot of anxiety with across the board with everything. So mm-hmm. the slightest thing, you could cough the wrong way and I'm getting anxiety, Damn not so. because of COVID. But, you <laughs> yeah. know, any little thing would make me sen- sensitive. Then by the third lockdown, which is what we're currently in. Is it? I thought it was four. Four, five, six, I can't ten, count, whatever. but don't ask me, yeah. But by the third lock- lockdown, um, it completely changed again because what's happened is the whole year was so, such an emotional roller coaster. Mm-hmm. By the end of the year, it took me a whole year to realise that I need to get myself together and try. This is what the situation is. Mm-hmm. We're in a pandemic. Either you ride with it or you you falter, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm I'm a very strong person, so there's no way I'm going to make anything completely break me. But you do go through moments. But so that was my personal experience for 2020. So okay. it was a roller coaster like that. Got you, Gigi. Mm, 2020. Um, it broke me and made me all in one. Okay. Um, I work in the NHS. Oof. So Girl, I we didn't applaud get a break. You. I was doing fifth. I'm still doing like long hour days now, but mm-hmm. I mean, money's going in my pocket. Let's not be foolish now. Um, so I work in the NHS. My dad got sick. Um, he actually caught sepsis. Sorry, he went into hospital. They put him on a corona ward, and then they said, "Oh, he's tested positive for COVID. This is why he's so bad." But it was actually the sepsis, and he got diagnosed by one of the doctors that I work with. Mm. Um, we couldn't speak to him for like a week. Um, The only time we could was on video call and he couldn't breathe properly. So it was hard for him to communicate with us over the phone. Mm. Doctors weren't telling us anything. Um, When he came home on his discharge papers, it actually said sepsis, but they told us it was COVID. But it had actually been an infection of the blood. Mm. Um, They also put a DNR on his record that I asked him if he, if they asked him. He said no, Um, they didn't call us. It was really stressful. And I found myself, I, I, I have a memory of walking down the canal and just walking and I didn't know where I was walking to and I just ended up behind the hospital that my dad was in Mm. and that's a moment that I will never forget and my dad thought he was dying he gave us his pin codes everything because that's it I was grieving my dad before he'd even gone because you know he's got COPD he's vulnerable um that really took its toll but it made me appreciate this year's made me appreciate 
everything that I didn't appreciate before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've I've cleared out people from my life that I no longer want in my life. You don't add value. And it's not because I'm like, I have no use for you, buy it. No, there's no reciprocation here. There's no mm -hmm. energy flow here. Like, it's not an exchange. Mm -hmm. You're draining me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realise how many people were draining me until I had time to myself mm -hmm. and really, like, had to sit with myself. Um, and, yeah, 2020, I mean, the way I see it now is... Everything I thought that was important, you see all this social media, you see all of this posting up and everything like that, it is not important. Agreed, yeah. The way I feel is important. Mm. The way my, my, my mental health is important. Nothing is more important than that because what I've learned is if my mind's in it, everything else follows. Yeah. This year broke me. For 26 years, I have known my life to be a certain way. I have known the world to work in a certain way. Mm. And in a few months, it stopped. Yeah. But I'm changed. still here. Yeah. And I'm even more motivated and I'm even more in like close to my family and I'm appreciating things more. And as rubbish as it's been and however, whatever you think of this COVID thing, if you don't try and find the positives and be grateful Not every sure. day, you will lose every single time. Mm. That's what I've learned this year. Um, and I've learned if I can survive and be OK after my whole world has been flipped upside down and everyone's around me. Everyone around me is going through their stuff. I'm going through my stuff. The world as we know, it's been flipped upside down, yet we're still here. We're going to be Talk all right. to yourself. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We're going to be all right. If I can do that, who's to say my whole world's just been flipped upside down and I'm still here and I'm still doing my thing and i am still got new ideas and stuff like that. I was really down for a period in 2020. Mm. Um, but I believe that, you know, sometimes you need to break down to build back up. Loved and it. that's what it done Loved to it. me. Miss so. LV? Miss LV? Um, do you know, 2020 has been like a roller coaster for me. Like, I know there was a point in time where you look now, I kind of like disappeared. Like, yeah. I like mm -hmm. ghosted like all the way off. Like, no, I kind of caught communication with everyone. I deleted all social media because I felt like there was a point where I was just losing my shit. Like, I think because everyone had so much time to kind of think about mm. stuff. I got so much in my own head that I feel like, like old trauma started mm -hmm. to come back and mm -hmm. I started like thinking about it. Like there was one point I was literally like losing my shit. Like my anxiety went skyrocket. Like I, I, I even went into the shower to try to call off. It just wasn't working. Like, um, but yeah, you guys definitely reached out. So thank you guys. And Elizabeth, we had a conversation. She's so sweet. Um, we had a conversation. Um, but then at the same time, that breaking me down stuff kind of like made me look at things into perspective mm -hmm. and made me see that like the way the world is moving right now I just felt like okay am I gonna be here and kind of do what I really want to do like mm -hmm. and be happy because it's like people have so much money in the world people had good jobs they lost all of that this year mm -hmm. people lost their homes people lost family people like so many things just you just realize that it just doesn't matter so um yeah up and down like I, I have a lot of things to be grateful for that's what i realized this year like i'm not in the worst of worst situations so all i can do is thank god and yeah man thank I'm, you Ms. i'm Elvin. good i'm doing good now miss fontaine I'm your reflection i'm dreading this <laughs> i hate this is so oh god i have anxiety we got you girl um, we got you 2020 uh gosh it wasn't a great time can't lie I just feel like for me personally, I've had prior to last year, I've had two years of hell. So for me, at the coming at the end of 2019, I was kind of trying to <laughs> I was trying to like um sort of put things together for myself and feel very positive for 2020. And, you know, I I started a business and stuff like that. And my business is very dependent on people being out and about. It's an events business my friend and I started. So that we, we um, yeah, started that towards the end of 2019. And going into 2020, everything was kind of like very positive and stuff. And then obviously coronavirus happened and all the venues are closed. People didn't have any confidence in going out. So that was kind of like that business has just completely been parked. And uh, we worked so hard to build a brand and put momentum. Um, 2020 was difficult because like I, I'm such a private person. My, um, my dad is quite sick. So he's in a very vulnerable position and he 
I've seen my dad once this sh twice this year, last year, twice. Um, oh, I don't want to cry. cry. You're make me cry. Um, I've seen my dad twice last year and it's difficult because he's in a position where he can't do anything for himself and not... Why am I the one that cries all the time? Oh, it's such a softy. Um, He's in a position where he can't um, do anything for himself and not being near your loved one in, in a pandemic is like really one of the worst things that you could ever deal with. Um, so that's been really difficult. And you've um, done it with such grace, girl, honestly, yeah. the way you carry yourself. You, you've read this year really well, babe. Yeah, definitely. Eloquent so. and elegance personified. <laughs> Um, okay. so yeah, he's, he's in a neuro rehab, um, like hospital, um, and that's been obviously closed off because they can't afford to have people coming in and out. Um, so there's that situation and then other situations as well. Like I got made redundant. Um, I like I've, I've dealt with breakups. I've dealt with other stuff I'm not gonna go into, just a lot. Like I just remember at the end of the first lockdown, I was in such a bad way. I was so like, I, I literally just said see you later to everybody. And I just went back home up north and just, I took like a month off, just mm. off. And um, that was really needed and um, yeah, that was a very dark, dark place, really, to be honest, because I felt like I'd been so resilient for two years, two, two years and eight months of just, no, well, two years of just sheer resilience and just getting on with it, being the oldest as well, looking out for my family, having to do things that I never thought that I would do. And I'm like, I, I'm a bit of a daddy's girl. Like, if there's any kind of issue that I go through, it's my dad that yeah. would help me. Even just being made redundant, my dad would have been the parent that I would go to for the support that I need and stuff like that. And yeah, just just having the resp added responsibility was a lot. And um, in terms of 2020, like, I feel like it's taught me a lot of things, but then it hasn't really, I, I don't know if it's taught me anything other than external stuff about the world. Yeah. It's made me more reflective. It's made me, less naive mm -hmm. about things um and um it's taught me uh, that people are dumb <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn. yeah we, we know that we do that but they are dumb level. 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 we found out we found yeah. out <laughs> um, <laughs> we thought it's like level. Dumb. it has but it's also made me a bit s cynical Sure. And I can't sit here and say, oh my God, like it's made me. I don't think the year made me. I really, I really don't think that last year has made me. I think um, it's just there, I dealt with it. I already knew I, I could deal with that. I don't think it was necessarily the hardest year of my life, but it was just an added annoyance really. Um, but yeah, there is lessons that I have learned. And also it's brought me closer to you guys. It's brought me closer to other friends. It's also taught me some people are, it's like I just realized that sometimes I do too much. Yeah. And what, what I've dealt with a lot is guilt in yeah. 2020, because I feel like I'm always that person that I'm dependable, I'm reliable, I'm there, I'm, I'm vibes. And it's like mm -hmm. when yeah. I'm when I'm in my hour of like need, not even need I'm just I'm literally broken. Yeah. Where is everybody? Yeah. But yeah. so it's like same at the same time I've realized in that like I said in that in that scenario I realized who is there for me, mm -hmm. and I've and I was so surprised at who was there as well. Mm. Like some people, yeah. I didn't even yeah. think. What, I thought, yeah. wow. Yeah. I became super close to certain people and the so-called best friends that I had, everyone's going through what they're going through. But I just feel like, I don't know. It's like when I when I retreat, it's like everybody 
type type because exactly so that i guess that wasn't that was a lesson itself but i don't know man i just feel the only good thing in a way is like being made redundant has forced me to take myself and my future more seriously because like i had a good job um and it's very easy to kind of rely on having a good job Mm -hmm. and be, have, having having lost that that good job and that security, I've all, I've always had a hustler's mentality. I've always had that, but it's really forced me to think shit. Like your time is your time, and and I guess it's a blessing in disguise that now we're in 2021. I wake up, my day is literally mine. Um, so in a way, that's good, but I don't know. 2020 is a year that I would love to forget. Definitely. Touche. How about yours? How about yours, Rem? Oh, yeah, that's going to skip me. Yeah, you're um, getting out of this. How was your 2020? Do you know what? It was a tale of two halves because professionally, it's been the most productive year of my life where I've really realised that I am here to do something special. It's given me innovation. It's been refreshing. I have managed to touch people and create systems that are really going to make waves in my industry. But personally, it's been heavy as hell. Because much like Faith, I've been dealing with a lot of guilt. And the guilt for me is guilty that I've made it. Guilty that I'm somebody that my parents can't appreciate because they can't understand that I've made it out of the situation that they created for me. Guilty that I've outgrown my friends. Guilty that I'm in a good job. Guilty that I'm successful. And guilty that I've got people that care about me. I've really had to reevaluate the relationships I have with people that I I love the most and part of that really broke my heart because the people that I don't want to let go are actually the people that damage me the most. Um, It's been a blessing because I have had the opportunity to really spend time in my my head, but I've also realised how much pressure I put on myself, how much pressure to, to be successful, to be disciplined, to eat right, to work out, to be educated, to, 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 upkeep on social media to be whatever anybody anticipates I need to be and I really lost myself in living up to what society anticipates this fucking gallus baller swagged out bullshit whatever people expect me to be I really lost the image of who the fuck I was and that was difficult because I was just like okay cool I hid behind work and then I had to take time off I had to they they forced me to take time off and then I just kind of sat there like for what a week I like I, I had no idea who the fuck I was and I just yeah. found myself sitting there looking at pictures of when I was a kid and like my nan and stuff and I was like right is this is this really who you thought you would be is this really who you thought you would be you'd really allow people to dictate your worth and your value and how far you can go and it's okay it's okay that you've outgrown your friends and it's okay that you've outgrown your family and it's okay that they don't appreciate you because at the end of the day what you're doing is important and who you are is important. So it's been, as I said, professionally it's been beautiful, but personally it's been harrowing because I've really realized that the people that I love and the people that are my bloodline really don't care because you're locked in an environment with them where you can't escape that and you realize how unhealthy people are. And I'll be honest, if it wasn't for my therapist, I don't know where I'd be. And also a massive thank you to to, to like, to Shorty as well. Cause she's even though like, she held me down at points where you really you forget who's there for you, but she's been there consistently and I, I rate that. So for me, it's just been been crazy. So on, on a lesson thing though, I recommend everybody gets a mentor and everybody has a therapist. Never be too proud Definitely. to say you need help. That, Definitely. That's kind of my main thing. Reaching out and asking for help, I realised shit, people I didn't even know was checking for me, was checking for me. So that was... yeah. yeah. That I think dope. the mistake we make is that we're, we're still figuring it out. Yeah, you Even when be, you're 80, uh, you, you still don't know it. You know, one thing that I've also learned this year is I know enough to know that I know nothing. Yeah. I started yeah. with all the conspiracy theories at the start of the year about COVID and this and that, and I was so down the rabbit hole. And then I was like, do you know what? My gut tells me something's not right. Mm. That's my belief there. I can't tell you who, what, where, why, 5G, this G, Most China, said 5G, about, I'm uh, this or that. Uh, I, I can't tell you that. I just know within myself. And it's kind of helped me. Everything else was silence. So, you know, it sounds a bit cheesy and cliche, but my inner guidance system has become so much louder. We've yeah. had some dope conversations about spirituality. And yeah, just, like, like this year, the stillness crazy. and stripping back to basics. Absolutely. It, 
it's beautiful now yeah, for absolutely. me. Like, for me, it's just yeah. beautiful. And, you know, like you said, it, it's so not the same thing, the mm. situation with your dad, but touching or not seeing loved ones, like my niece and nephew, I'm really close to them. And the time that I saw them after two months or two and a half months, my sister bawled her eyes out. Mm. And I hugged those kids like I... It was all, like, I don't know what it was, but it was like... Oh my God. That like, value is just. I didn't just... know when I was going to see them again. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing keeping me going is knowing that they're alive and healthy. Mm. But, you know, that kind of holding on to my niece and nephew and be like, feelings matter. That's mm. what I've learned. Everything else yeah, is, is something different. And, you know, finding that balance and knowing, like I said, I know. I know enough to know I know nothing. Absolutely. And we're all just figuring out our journey. And 2020 is kind of just. You know, we've all shared our experiences and I feel like... You just had to all, sit down. But we're all saying that it, it was, on the flip side, it was it was terrible and stuff like that. And there is some positives. But the main thing that I just want to highlight is we're, we're here. We're here, yeah. Do you we're know what I mean? We're yeah, here, we're, we're filming, here. we're showing up. We're still doing... <laughs> yeah, even if you're for crawling, me, for me. but you're doing mm -hmm. it. Be grateful that you can yeah. crawl. And I know it's very hard to find things to be grateful for sometimes, especially for me as well. Mm. I used to not, I need this, I need this, Listen, I need during this. lockdown, at one yeah. point in time, do you know what my barometer for success was? That I got up, brushed my teeth and showered. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. do you know, I went through, so true. I went through like, so I have never been one to, um, to adhere to, like, mental health and depression, but I genuinely went through a bout where that was achievement for me. So somebody yeah. who goes from going yeah. to the gym at six o'clock to work, to cooking, meal prepping, helping everybody else or studying, to mm. literally just doing those functional things in a day, I had to humble myself. Yeah, 100%. It was crazy. Because yeah. I'm like, A lot of people this? have to humble themselves this yeah. year. Yeah, because you can't, the go, you can't go there, pipe down and sit with crazy. yourself. Same for me as well. Because yeah. like, this year as well, yeah. was just, lockdown was... It was Stripped off the wigs, there was no makeup, <laughs> no makeup, it was just me. That's do you know what I'm so saying? True. It was just me this whole lockdown. I was doing the skin, I was focusing on my skin, do you know what it's I'm saying? Clear as fuck, I was, by the way. It's clear as fuck. I was, I was focusing on my, um, on my natural hair, like, do you know what I'm saying? I was doing my protein treatment. When I started trying to get myself together, mm -hmm. and be, me being in that really depressive place is what actually made me channel my energy into writing music again. Okay. That's kind of where my music came from, because when I stripped everything away, I just stuff just started popping up in my head, and that's when I started Get writing music. Love yeah, that. and that. and that's when. Love yeah, hey, hey, don't you? Yeah. Know. Check, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, the tune that I actually channeled into, obviously, you guys haven't heard it yet, but you'll hear it. But you can feel the pain in that track, and that's kind of where when I channeled all my energy into that, then. I don't know, it just started making me feel happy. And I was just like, this is, this is what I like to do, do you know what mm. I mean? And it took my mind off stuff. And me and you had a conversation earlier and I said that, personally, I'm still not ready to talk about things and I don't know if I'm ready to deal with them because I don't know if me tapping into that side of me will... Make you break, break me, you. yeah, make me yeah. or break me. Because I feel like when I actually think about certain things and... I start to realise what actually happened mm. to me and I don't know if I can mentally deal with that. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? There's certain things that I just mm. have not said out loud and I don't know yeah. if I can or want to. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what's funny? We all have we our had, own ways of dealing with things. We had a conversation in Clubhouse about therapy. Do you remember? The end of our Clubhouse session. Check our Clubhouse sessions out. And therapy, you have to be ready because you strip back layers and peel back things you didn't know was there. So the foundation you build from needs to be a solid one and you have to be solid in yourself to do that. My first bout of therapy, I was not ready. I, and I say, I cried myself to sleep for 10 weeks. And I remember it was 10 weeks because it was through winter. I remember because <laughs> I'm going to sleep and it's like I was crying myself to sleep and waking up in the dark. And I'm like, what the fuck? But my second bout of therapy when I started in um, 2017, I was ready because I realized that the things that were breaking me was continuing to break the relationships around me and I couldn't get through that wall. Okay. So take all the time that you need. You no, know, 100%, because I, I, I did take one step one time to kind of like do the whole therapy and... When I was there, obviously, I, I just I was just crying, crying, That's crying, really struggling to speak. No, but then on my... Obviously, she wanted to do, like, go into, like, a proper, like, whole treatment, whatever, mm. yeah. When I was on my way home, mm. I was talking to myself. <laughs> I was well, talking... Well, like, out loud? Like, out, head? out loud. Okay. I was talking to myself, like... And this is why I don't, like, say things out loud, because certain things that I said were now echoing in my head. Mm. They were echoing in my head. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it was echoing. I could hear... 
what I said in those sessions was replaying in my head. I could hear it That's again. Normal. No, it's not. I felt like it was turning me crazy. No, it is and, I ref- and I didn't go back. And I said, I just personally just can't do this because I feel like it's turning me no, crazy. What, is normal. what I will say effective. is on that note, especially as we're, we're highlighting the importance, importance of therapy. I tried therapy a long time ago. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with your therapist, yep. change that. Your therapist don't fits run you. from therapy. Change that. I I haven't gone back to therapy. Um, not. I'm not going to say that I figured it all out myself. I would just say the time in my life when I went to therapy and I tried it, um, I was quite young. Uh, the mm-hmm. therapist wasn't. She didn't really interact with me. She just kind of stared at a me. A therapist for, is for a second. relationship. People forget yeah. you have to be able to bond in certain ways. Like I had multiple therapists before I found my first therapist who fit. And funny enough, the two therapists I've had the most success with are both black women with locks. I don't know if there's irony behind that, but it does take time. You do have to try it and you do have to be brave because you have to open yourself up to people who don't know you. But it, it, is, it is something worth nurturing when you're ready to do it. It's, it's a crazy period. But as much as we've addressed what we've addressed, and I hope that this has provided you guys with inspiration, what are some of the positives that have come out of this year? And how are you dealing with lockdown version number th- Three, 2010. It's kind of, listen, <laughs> come like final destination because I can't keep up with the numbers here. Like, what it's we so like? true. Um, I think for I, I think for a lot of musicians and stuff, this would like you said, people get especially the amount of feelings that went on in 2020 and emotions. Mm. It is so good for some certain people's careers. Like even so, just before lockdown, literally a week. Well, we got locked down on the 23rd of March. On the 17th, I was like, yeah, um, I've got my own business. And I was like, yep, this is the perfect moment to just flourish my business, put 100% into it. Five days later, it was game over, right? But that time gave me the time to think, you know what? I need to make this bad situation work for me and I need to find a way to do it. So anytime we're going to ever be in a pandemic again, if we are, we're not we're, pandemic is the ghetto sorry panoramic is the ghetto we don't <laughs> want to be there okay yeah I, my advice to anybody is as hard as it is speak to someone mm-hmm. no matter what you're going through whether it's a friend whether it's your therapist or even if it's yourself sometimes people can, doesn't actually need all that yeah, you stuff can journal going on. you and can stuff actually like that. do it yourself and challenge mm-hmm. you know um channel things in a certain place and anything that is negative of that year or of what you're doing just try and turn it into a positive or make it positive. Some things are out of our control, like family matters and so forth. But anything that you see that's bad, 2020 and any other year that's like this, don't let it break you, let it transform me. Love that. Miss Faith? Um, what was the question again? I mean, she skipped ahead, but we're going to go for it. Yeah, because I was so, confused. If no, you no, had to I experience... Just, I, you had to, so, I read that, though. So if, it's your experience, if you had to experience 2020 again, what would you tell yourself? Um... It's, I think it's not so much if I experience it again, but I think um, one of the things that I think really helped me was um, using my creativity. Like, I'm quite a creative person. So um, I, I've i always had, like, I just love writing. Like, I've, I, I'm, the, I'm that kid that just wrote books all the time. And um, I channeled a lot of that through like writing my own like writing poems which I've done all my life but like I just went ham I've got like so many of them in my phone publishing they'll come in yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna speak that into existence girl amen one day it's gonna pay off come on (laughs) come on (laughs) the year has really um tested my faith Mm -hmm. with God and those parts where I was just like what are you like what is this like what's the purpose why is this happening God like how is it not enough? And I feel like it. It comp- I needed that because yeah. there's even a passage in the Bible that talks about um, sometimes God puts you through adversity so you can seek His face more. And I feel like I went through that, and I feel like my faith has been restored despite the fact that um, it not restored but taken to a new level despite the fact it's that actually passionate. it's been a pretty shit year. Love that, right, Gigi. Two sentences. What did you tell yourself? Let's go. Believe in your own source, man. Like hey. Believe everything. in the blood clot source, innit? At the end of the day, if we haven't learned anything this year, what's people's opinions? What's people's things? This person's doing this for clout. This person's doing this. When you're sitting in your house by yourself with your mind, can you deal with it? Yeah, can, you, yeah. can you redirect your mind to positive thoughts when you're in the middle of a pandemic? And I'm not saying if you can't, it means you failed. I'm saying make that the goal. Because once you control this... <laughs> 
Everything else follows. Loved that. Everything. Thank you, Miss LV. Um, I wouldn't actually tell myself anything. I feel like I'd just let it, let it be because it's like if there's another rough year, do you know what I'm saying? It's just like I just kind of went with the flow mm. and I mm. felt like I channeled it. I feel, I'm a strong believer in everything happens for a reason yeah. and I felt like it helped me channel my energy into something good and it helped me write music, which is what I'm passionate about. So I feel mm-hmm. like sometimes if you're going through something and you have something you're passionate about, try to channel your energy in that place to take your mind off things. Love um, that. Yeah. For me, it'd be be kind to yourself, be patient. You are love, you are light, and you are special. It's been a difficult year and it's been a difficult start to this year, but just know that we appreciate you. Our DMs are open. You are not alone. Thank you for watching. We have been Talk That Talk. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. We appreciate you. Thank Peace. you.